this demonstration, we will be looking at Ellis Dyna and its application for the progressive structural collapse of a water tower. This demonstration highlights Ellis Dyna's capability in large deformation, arbitrary contact, and material failure, as well as modeling water. Let's start with some background on Ellis Dyna and its other applications. Automotive crash simulations are the most well known application of Ellis Dyna. The automobile manufacturers have embraced simulation for decades due to the high cost and schedule impact of these physical tests, and oftentimes crash test dummies are included in the simulation. Another application for Ellis Dyna is in manufacturing simulation. Three examples are shown here. Crimping, sheet metal forming, and drilling. Drop simulations are common with Ellis Dyna, either consumer electronics or heavy equipment such as a drop of a nuclear waste container. Explosives and ballistic simulations are possible with Ellis Dyna. On the left is a, an underwater shock analysis where the water level is denoted. On the right is a ballistics application with a projectile penetrating four plates of armor. There are more studies being performed to assess loss of life and property damage due to terrorist attacks. Increasingly, new construction of large projects are including a requirement to assess this damage. Existing structures may also require evaluation and retrofit to reduce risk. And for large structures, simulation is the only choice since conducting experimental tests is usually not feasible. We will be simulating the collapse of a water tower when subjected to a catastrophic damage to one of the supporting columns. First, we are interested to see if loss of the column will cause collapse, and secondly, what does the progressive collapse of the water tower look like and what sort of damage might it cause to surrounding structures. We're going to be accessing Ellis Dyna from the Workbench Ellis Dyna extension. First, we will insert a Workbench Ellis Dyna block. Let's set up the material data first. The default material is a structural steel, and we will rename that A36 and add a multilinear isotropic hardening material model to simulate the nonlinear stress strain response. Next, we'll add a concrete material that will simply model the concrete as a linear elastic solid. The density is 0 0.085, and we'll use a representative. 3e e to the 6 Young's modulus with a Poisson's ratio of 0.2. Going back to the project page, we will now import the water tower geometry and start Mechanical. Mechanical has now opened and we will see that each of the bodies has been assigned a material of A36 because it is the default material. That will work for all bodies except for the foundations which we want to assign our concrete. Another geometric change we need to make is to make the ground a rigid body. To model the water, we're going to use a point mass and attach it to two surfaces of the tank. The point mass is assumed to be 2e to the 6 pounds, which is approximately equal to the weight that would be contained in this water tower if it were full. Also, I am not attaching this point mass to the lower curve section of the tank because that portion undergoes significant deformation during the collapse. We do not want to make that unnecessarily rigid. Now that the geometry has been set up, we'll move on to the connections. At the base of the water tower, we want to include a bonded contact between the bottom of the steel towers and the concrete foundations. I'm going to insert a connection group and scope the bodies for contact detection 
to be the water tower legs and concrete columns. So I'm going to orient this so I can do the correct selection of bodies. And hit apply to the scope. I'm also going to do the group by parts so that I don't get duplicate con contact connections at the base. I'm going to right click and create automatic connections and I should have four contact connections. One at the bottom of each of the legs. I'm going to change these to be breakable with 10 psi normal stress limit and a 5 psi shear stress limit. The individual bolts are not simulated so therefore we have to adjust the effective area um, and stress accordingly. This corresponds to uh, four or five high strength bolts. The second type of contact is the body interaction. By default it is a frictionless contact set, um, set up amongst all the bodies. We're trying to simulate the failure of one of the columns so therefore we're going to exclude that column from contact by selecting all bodies and then deselecting the one of interest. I'm going to change it to frictional contact with 0.5 to give it some more realistic effects. Let's generate the mesh. This mesh looks reasonable for this demonstration. There are additional mesh controls that can be assigned either at a global level or at a local level scoped to specific entities such as bodies, faces, edges, or points. Moving on to analysis settings, we're going to insert a time of three seconds, which I have found to be enough time to simulate the most important part of this event. I'm going to add a fixed support on the underside of the columns. Simply insert a fixed support after they're selected. And then since the ground is a rigid body, I can insert a fixed support on that body entirely. Next I'm going to add in the only load in this model, which is gravity acting in the negative y direction. I'm going to turn off the mesh just for easier viewing. We can see the arrow denoting the direction of gravity. One will note that the gravity is step applied, which would cause a shock to the system. So in order to get to a steady state simulation, I'm going to insert what's called a dynamic relaxation. Dynamic relaxation attempts to get to a steady state converged solution prior to the transient. And under this, we need to insert a general load, which is the standard earth gravity. So there will be a pre-step of getting this established equilibrium and then continuing, continuing with a full dynamic effect. The last thing to add is the death time for the contact of the failed column. We do that by using contact properties. We'll scope to the first bonded contact region, which is highlighted here in red and blue. And we're going to insert a death time of 1 e to the minus 9, which essentially is a time 0. Now the model is ready to be solved. The simulation has now completed, and we can review the results. With failure of one of the concrete columns, there is catastrophic collapse of the water tower. The simulation was only run for three seconds because the rigid body attachment of the water to the walls of the tank would not simulate the impact of the tank on the ground accurately. For that, the actual water would need to be simulated. To model the water, we first start with a solid body. A solid body representing the water volume 
was added to the model and meshed with tetrahedron elements. If I show all bodies, you can see where it is located in the assembly. In Ellis Prepost, this tetrahedron mesh was converted to SPH elements using a simple utility. Simply put, SPH elements are single node elements which can represent the physics of water. A typical mesh cannot handle the large distortion which occurs due to sloshing and splashing of liquids. Each of the tetrahedron nodes is converted to an SPH element and contact is defined between these elements and the surface of the tank and the ground. To render SPH elements, LLS Prepost generates spheres. For the full water model, the simulation was run out longer until the tank hits the ground, which provides a more realistic assessment of the entire collapse of the water tower. Up until about three seconds, the results are very similar to the rigid body simulation. And once the tank hits the ground, it bursts open and the water spills out providing a, a very realistic view of what this would look like. To enhance the simulation, a neighboring structure could be included that could then feel the effects of the inertia of the water splashing against it and it potentially would cause damage to that structure as well. For this demonstration, we've shown how Ellis Dyna can be used to assess and simulate the collapse of a structure resulting from catastrophic damage.